Hello and welcome to Learning Objective 3 of Chapter 14, Performance Measurements. Uh, this is Learning Objective 3, Calculate and Interpret Ratios that are used to analyze solvency. So if you'll recall, solvency is, will this company be able, uh, does this company have enough assets to pay its uh, liabilities effectively? So in the long run, will this company um, be solvent? So uh, some ratios that we use to determine solvency uh, include debt to assets, times interest earned, and free cash flow. So please note, I do understand that uh, the free cash flow is not a ratio, um, but it does tell you, hey, after all of your obligations, like, do you have enough cash? So please note, it's not on your reference sheet um, because it is not technically a ratio, um, but however, it is part of our information that helps us determine whether or not this company is solvent. Okay, so our first item, debt to total assets. Uh, this is cool. Um, how? What is your total debt and what is your total assets? Uh, lower is uh, typically better because uh, you do not want to have, um, you know, uh, basically a lot, a lot of liabilities and no assets. So um, let's see, one second. Um, because this total debt to equity ratio is relatively simple, I won't be doing an example here, um, but just understand this is where you take your total liabilities and divide it by your total assets. Uh, lower is typically better. Um, and if you have zero uh, debt, then I guess this would be, what would that be, an indeterminable uh, amount. And then you would just explain that. All right. Next is our times interest earned, and we will be doing an example in this. So this is um, where we're like, hey, cool, you're going to have some interest payments. What is your ability to actually pay those interest payments? So are you able to service your debt? So this is where we take our net income and we work backwards because we want to get our EBIT um, divided by our uh, interest expense. So EBIT is where we take our net income, we add back the interest expense, we add back income tax, and we're like, cool, what is your earnings before interest and taxes? And then you divide it by your interest expense. And this says, cool, how much of your net income before interest and taxes um, are, do you have to service your interest expense? And the more you have, in general, the higher uh, is typically better. Okay, I say typically because um, one of the reasons why you might say, oh, well, it's not always better is because maybe you are a company that relies on leverage and, you know, if it's, if, sure, if you aren't, you know, borrowing enough money, quote, maybe your, oper your, um, your business development plans are kind of stalled out and so, um, you know, maybe you, this is an indication that uh, your company isn't growing as much because you're not taking on as much debt and because you're not actually expanding as fast as the company itself typically wants. That's an extreme case, but in general, higher is typically better. All right, let's look at an example. All right, uh, so give this video a pause, give this a try, and we will come back and talk about this in just a moment. 